What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel and today we're working on my buddy Brian's 2013-991-911 Carrera S. Today we're installing the RR Racing paddle shifters for the PDKs. For those of you who would like the shifter buttons on your steering wheel to function like true paddles, this is a quick easy mod. Or so we thought. We tried to do this two days ago. It should have been an easy install as we thought because the instructions were pretty easy. Lo and behold, we came and find out very quickly that um, though these steering wheels may look the same, they do not all have the same electronics with inside them. Unfortunately, so we tried this for a few hours to try and figure this out. Couldn't figure out anything, couldn't find any wiring diagrams, so we sat on it. We looked all over the forums and we think we found a solution. It's either it works or I buy a new steering wheel. So. We want to give a big disclaimer. I know I may have been talking a lot, but this is this one is not for the faint of heart. It should be easy and it technically isn't that difficult. However, we've already run into the issue where it didn't work before because we were given the wrong thing. So we don't know if this time we have the right thing, but we're crossing our fingers and hoping that we are. So before you do this mod, you need to understand that this may be, uh, this may be it. It's either your paddles are going to work perfectly or it's gonna get ruined and the paddle shifters on your steering wheel won't work and you'll need to buy a new one if you'd like to uh, retain the functionality of the shifting unit you know, on your steering wheel. Without further ado, let's get right into this. I'm gonna kind of break it down step by step so you guys understand exactly what to do. So the first things first, you need to disconnect the battery because we're gonna be removing the airbag. You definitely don't want that to blow up in your face. If you'd like to remove the airbag with the battery on, that is uh, up to your discretion. We're not responsible for any broken noses or collarbones. Hey, free nose job. In the comments, can we get a F in the chat for Brian? He's learning how to surf and got stung by a stingray. Yeah, not, not fun. Not fun experience. Fuck Seal Beach. We're inside the car and this is what the paddles are gonna look like after they've been installed. They look very nice. These are, um, I think they're aluminum. Though these are installed, they do not work right now. When you get inside the car, what you're gonna look at is this basic steering wheel. They're gonna have these little plastic tabs on the back. There's nothing really to them. They're literally just held in my clips so you, you could just prime them apart. They're, they may need a little bit of persuasion, but that's about it. They'll come right off. After you take those little plastic caps off, there is a hole on the bottom side of the steering wheel that is right here. You need to stick a screwdriver in here. There's a spring-loaded clip that will release this airbag. There you go. One tip that I found when getting this airbag out is to actually use a flathead screwdriver and to turn it this direction because the spring goes this way. It's kind of hard to hit that spring and actually uh, disengage this airbag. Just like that, and this comes straight out. Once this airbag is removed, there's a clip on the inside of here. It's literally the only clip. You wanna pull that out. Uh, after you remove this clip and after the airbag is out, you need to remove this plastic trim on the steering wheel. And this is kind of difficult. These clips are in there pretty good. And what I found works best is actually to pry from the bottom. If you've never done this before and you've never taken your steering wheel apart, it will not come apart this easy. So don't watch this video and assume that it's just gonna pop out because it won't. I think I'm gonna actually pull off this steering wheel by itself, which is this Torx T something bit. I don't know. I'll figure it out and I'll let you guys know. Do you know what specs the torque is back at once so you take it off? Yeah, that'll be fine. be crazy when I try to like drive my car in a week and I make a left turn and this whole steering wheel just comes off. The way you're waving those two fingers like that is kind of turning me on. The way you can get your whole hand in there is also turning me on. Do you want this car to work or not? <laughs> Perfect. All right. Look how fucking easy that was, baby. All right, cut. We're going to bring this inside. Ladies, he's single, by the way. Hit up Tyler. Slide into his DMs and he'll give you the DM to slide into. <laughs> you missed this. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's too busy. She's, you pouring take, me out. Take off you plastic piece. You take off plastic, plastic piece. It's not hard. Plastic piece off. There we go. Take the whole steering wheel off today? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. He Ooh. needs business. This is really personal. Yeah, this is uh, round two. This is Tyler versus the steering wheel. He's taking it very personal. Like Carl Malone winning the MVP over Michael Jordan. He's taking it personal. Look at these were our instructions. It said we have a clip with wires in it and one clip with eight wires and this is what we need to get to. As you can see, we have no clip with the 11 wires and uh, we have one clip with eight and two clips with fours. This is not the same circuit. I tried to still do the same exact thing from this clip onto this one, assuming that maybe one of these clips still work the same. It doesn't. 
it disconnects your horn. It disconnects your horn, so. First time in my life I haven't been horny. Didn't miss that opportunity. This is the back side of the plastic fascia for the steering wheel. There's gonna be, I believe, five bolts surrounding this plastic shroud, which needs to come out so that you can pull these two uh, plastic housings out. These two plastic housings um, house the motherboards for the shifter buttons, which need to come out. When you get everything apart, this is what it should look like. You have the two plastic housings. Now these are the two motherboards that control your shifting. I'm gonna switch this around because this is actually what it looks like. So this is your right hand shift. This is your left hand shift. This button right here that you're looking at, this button right here is your downshift. This button, not these four, these two right here are your upshift. This is the motherboard setup that we're looking at. There is one eight pin connector on the right side, uh, a two pin connector and a four pin connector. And then we have one four pin connector on the left side. Now this is where our wiring diagram sit, uh, significantly differs. You can obviously trace and follow the leads and figure out which one does what. However, they're bridged together. It's like this is the parent board and this is um, the slave board, I guess you could say. What you need to figure out how to do is cancel some of the connections on here and some of the signals that transfer from here to here, as well as invert this signal to this signal. I know that sounds pretty crazy, but we'll show you guys what needs to happen with this motherboard specifically to make this work. And this is the section of the oh shit part of this procedure. If you ruin these, this is where your paddles will not work anymore. First thing that you're gonna have to do, as you guys can see right here, I have removed one of these wires from the pin. This is the fourth wire um, completely from both sides. Now, why is that? So I'm removing completely the upshift signal to the secondary circuit board. By doing this, we're just removing the upshift function from this board. Now, what we need to do here is disable the downshift function, which is these two contact pads right here, and switch them with this upshift. And so the way that we're gonna do that is if you guys can see right here, these little connections on the circuit board, we're gonna have to break some of these. Now the most important thing for this downshift is that we need this downshift connection to remain intact right here where you see the soldering point. So we're gonna need to make sure that we cut this line and connection after that because we're gonna need to use this to solder it and bridge it to the upshift connections if that makes any sense at all. I'm gonna do that and then I'll take a picture of this, put it on the screen and show you guys what needs to happen. Okay, what you guys are looking at on the screen right now is the back side of the circuit board. The two contact patches that you see at the top right hand corner of the screen are the downshift signals. Now on the left hand side of the screen, you can see the eight pin connector, the four pin connector and the two pin connector. The four pin connector is what you're gonna focus on and as you can see labeled on the screen, that top fourth pin is what you're gonna need to remove bridging the upshift signal to the left hand side of the circuit board. Now this can easily be done by just removing the wire from the clip and not doing anything on the circuit board side of this thing. So this is pretty simple. The next thing that we're gonna focus on is breaking the downshift signal. This is one of the most crucial parts in this paddle install to make the paddles function like true paddles where you pull the right hand side to upshift and the left hand side to downshift. Breaking this connection right here will allow you to make the right hand side of the steering wheel uh, not sh downshift when you pull up on the paddle. This can easily be done with a razor, that's how I broke it. The biggest part that you need to pay attention to is that hole on the circuit board that you can use to repurpose the downshift signal. You need to cut it in front of that so that you can still uh, reconnect that downshift signal if need be. The last thing that we're gonna look at on this back side of the board is the redirection of the downshift signal to the upshift signal. This is done by sticking a wire in between both those holes and bridging it by soldering the two connections. Uh, we'll show you a better picture on the other side all right so what we've done right here is we have bridged the connection for the upshift and the downshift right here as you guys can see I'm gonna take a picture for this better so you guys can understand I'm gonna put it on the screen okay so what we're looking at is the front side of the circuit board the two contact patches that you can see at the top of the screen is the upshift signal as you can see highlighted in blue what we need to do is break that upshift signal so that the front button no longer works anymore okay so what you can see highlighted in red is redirecting the upshift signal to the downshift signal by using the holes in the circuit board like we said so this is a better picture you can understand what's going on here so what we've done is we've cut the two signals one from 
the downshift and one from the upshift so they're not making a full connection. Then what we've done is we've jumped them from here to here uh, and intercepting that signal and switching it to your downshift. I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody listening, but that's what's happening. This is what it should look like when it's done. Super exciting. You have to cut away a little bit of this um, rubber seal. As you can see on this side, the rubber seal is completely full. How are you feeling? Nervous. Yeah. Excited. It's like my first time all over again. Hopefully this lasts a little longer. Now time for uh, all this right here will be reassembled in three, two, one. Oh, dude, I thought the TikTok people do it. <laughs> You're an idiot. Oh. Three, two, one. Brian, it's not done, fuck. Fuck. Just, just like that, Brian. We did it. As of right now, we have the whole wheel reassembled other than putting the airbag back into here. What we're gonna go do is bring this back into the car, put this wheel on, um, and it's kind of what it looks like. So from the back side, I'm gonna flip this over for you guys real quick so you can see this. Mm -hmm. This is what the paddles look like when they're installed, just like this. They don't have the little retainer cap. This right here, what it used to previously have on the back. Um, so that is open. This is the most crucial part of putting your steering wheel back on is making sure that you put it on straight. So we know the wheels are straight because we made them straight before we put it on. That's, that's straight. Okay. It'll be like my 67 Mustang where the right spoke of the steering wheel is at the 12 o'clock position. That means the car is going straight. Well, the biggest part that I kind of struggle with sometimes actually is putting this stupid airbag. Why do I keep struggling with the airbag? It's like... Does it work? Oh, it work. It freaking works, baby. All right. Horn works. Here you go. First drive. There's the Genesis. You're right. Okay. We're officially in manual. Can you see the first gear? It shifts up, Ryan. Fuck yeah. This shifts up, Ryan. Okay. Hit this downshift position. Downshifts. Oh, here we go. <laughs> we fucking did it. Fucking Tyler Cordura. These buttons don't. They don't do anything. Don't Perfect. do anything. Yep. Officially in it for Brian's first time right now with the paddles. Let's get his first reaction. Give us a little flick. Let's see it. Oh my god, come on, don't jump kind of me like that. Mission accomplished. This was a success, baby. Hell yeah. I love them. So there you have it. R R R racing. Paddle shifters. R R racing. R R racing paddle shifters on the freaking 2013 991. Carrera 911S. If you guys have any questions or have any concerns or would like yours installed, feel free to DM me. My Instagram handle will be on the screen and in the description below. Hit me up.